Hi, I'm Bartosz from Cyrus, and this is the fifth episode in a series devoted to the notion of sound quality in hi-fi. In this episode, we will talk about the emotional content. So far, we have discussed a few issues related to technology, but to many of us, music is not only about specs and measurements. It's supposed to bring enjoyment. Internally, within Cyrus, we define this element as emotional content. We want to achieve a sound that is technically impeccable, but at the same time, a sound that moves us. It's not necessarily a given. We know there are brands focusing on technical perfection, but the resulting sound may be considered by some people as too clinical and unengaging. One of the aspects that we at Cyrus pay a lot of attention to in this respect is vocal reproduction. Now, vocals are not easy to get right. This is because we humans have a lot of experience with them and will immediately sense if they sound real and convincing. Some people have not heard certain, certain instruments live, but all of us have heard a lot of vocals. So how do you see it? Do you agree? 100% completely agree. And this is, this is where truly great hi-fi really shines. First thing is it's quite difficult because the vocal range tends to be where the crossover point is on most loudspeakers. So having control over that range is, uh, uh, is A, it's difficult, B, it, when you get it right, it's absolutely fantastic. It's those tiny nuances that kind of make your hair stand on end, the little intakes of breath and the tiny breaks in the voice um, that are you know, so easily brushed over in, in, in lesser systems, but are absolutely essential to that sort of emotional communication. And, and frankly, that is the essence of Cyrus. That's, that's what we're trying to do. So when you listen to those recordings that you know have those those kind of tiny details in that you get that full experience. That's that's what we're about. Do you have any recordings you use to evaluate this aspect? The one that jumps out for me, I suppose, would be Camellio. Can you tell us a bit more about it? It's production-wise, it's an incredibly simple track. Um, it is mainly just her with piano, um, but you're hanging on every word she says. The the pause on the word. It, it kind of sums up most of what we've discussed in, in this article. Of every, every element of that, you've got you've got the timing and the attack of the piano. You've got the the pause, the breaks, the timing of the vocal. You, it's it's just for me. If I had to pick one track that sums up the Cyrus system, it would probably be that one. Stuart, what about you? What about vocals and you? <laughs> uh, vocals and me. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, as a team, we all have a different, slightly different take on vocals, which is a good, in my view, is a good thing because it always comes down to some discussion over when we get it right, you know. So, uh, but from my point of view, I particularly dislike um, exaggerated sibilances. I've got a real problem with that, um, and it's always, obviously, always difficult to know when sibilance is correct and not exaggerated. But it's always something that that I find a little bit intrusive in a performance. Um, one of the tracks, that, again, that I mean, uh, Kerry's example, actually, Kerry's example of Ambison is a great one uh, for, for, for wrapping up everything here, including this. But we did a lot of listening and to uh, Tracy, Tra Cha Tracy Chapman track this time around, um, talking about a revolution. And particularly the vocals and also the opening acoustic guitar. Those opening bars are quite challenging for any system and you can deduce a lot about the system just going into that. Um, but actually, the emotion really is in connecting with the performer, isn't it? At the end of the day, that's what we want to do. We want to connect through the system to the performer. And uh, a track that always does that for me, and I don't think it's a great favourite particularly with our listening panel is uh, Nora Jones. Nora Jones generally, but come away with me. That track is fantastic. I just want to go away with her. You know, <laughs> when she's singing that, I just want to do it. <laughs> and I've never tired of that track. When it's played on a good system, there's just something about it. It's just fantastic. Um, emotionally, uh, yes, relates exactly to what Barter says. There are 
there are other emotions other than just wanting to run away um, that with somebody who's singing. But um, I don't ever get an emotional buzz out of rock music. I never really want to be part of the band, for example. I'm sure there are people who do, but that doesn't float my boat particularly. I, I, I can't get an emotional connection with a rock band, whether anybody else can, I don't know. However, I do listen to quite a lot of electronic dance music and I do get very emotionally involved with that, which is a bit like a high, you know, so I love getting charged up by that kind of stuff. It's a bit like a drug, you know. <laughs> but then that's a different kind of emotion. You listen to it when you're in that kind of frame of mind. Well, you probably don't, but I do. <laughs> but it's great to have a balance on that. David, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a massive fan of people that focus. I, like talking about electronic dance music, I mean, someone like Alison Moye, when she's uh, when when she's belting out and uh, practically screaming, you can and the, the tiny little breaks in her voice, or or, or even mod, Beth Ditto, a modern equivalent, you know, you know, you can really really connect with those artists when they're when when you're sat there and and you're you're on a great system, you can hear every slight nuance, just just an amazing experience. That for me is the pinnacle. I can honestly say, actually, David, I've never played Beth Ditto on a decent system, and I'm very interested to go and explore that now. <laughs> <laughs> Do so. She can really sing. <laughs> you know what? I will check this track out myself. I'm intrigued. But that's all for this episode. If you haven't watched the other episodes in the series, you can find them in our YouTube channel. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Bye.